technically it's working. Okay. All right. So it is begin. It is begun. So we're going to talk about direct variation today. And one of my pet peeves is that direct variation is kind of like everybody thinks, ooh, it's so awesome or so, you know, important. It is important, but it's not a big deal. It's just a way to describe something that you've been doing for two years. Um, in the book, it gives a formula for direct variation. And in other books, it gives you another formula for direct variation. And I'm going to give you yet a third formula for direct variation. And you will find that they are all exactly the same thing. Okay? In the book, they say direct variation is this. Y equals AX. In other books, they say direct variation is this. Y equals KX. And in Gary's math class, Gary's version of this is this. Y equals MX plus zero. All of them are the same. They're basically all the same thing, right? What's different? What is, what's different between them? So raise your hand. What's different? Somebody. Nikki. It's not really different. It's just they all have that zero, but they're just not showing it. Right. They all have a zero. They all have a plus zero right here, but they're not showing it. They all have that. Now, what else is different? Um, yeah, Emma. The letters. The letters. This guy, in our book, they have an A. In <coughs> most other books, they have a K. And in Gary's world, they have an M. Now, why would Gary's world be written that way? Does anybody notice anything about the way I wrote that? Yes, Lila. It's, um, it's slope-intercept slope form. Direct variation. I'm, it's, this is so important. I'm going to write this down. Direct variation. All direct variation is direct. I'm going to put DV for direct variation. Direct variation is simply um, uh, uh, let me see slope-intercept form when B equals zero. Direct variation is simply slope-intercept form when B equals zero. Remember I told you last year that sometimes people call the <coughs> slope-intercept form the y equals form? Remember me saying that? It means you just solve for, if it, no matter how your equation looks, you solve for y, so it says y equals. And then you will always be, always, always, always be in slope-intercept form. If it says y equals, then you're in slope-intercept form. Right? And so to tell if something is in direct variation, I mean, it, to tell whether y varies directly with x, you, all you have to do is write it so that it says y equals, and then you have, and if, it, and if it works this way, and you get y equals ax, or y equals kx, or y equals mx, without anything after it, it is direct variation. It varies directly. All right? So, yes, question? Well, in the book, like, the non-direct variations have like y equals ax plus 4. Right, okay. So, so, so let me, now if this is true, if this is true, right here, what point does every single direct variation <coughs> problem have in it? Zero. Zero what? <coughs> Zero comma what? Zero comma zero. Every, in order for it to be direct variation, one of the points in the line has to be zero comma zero. That means if you have a graph, it has to start at the origin, at zero, zero. Has to. And then if it does, it's direct, it varies directly. If it has y equals, say, we'll say 2x plus 4, and I have to go up 4, and I put my dot up here, it doesn't vary directly because it doesn't go through 0. 0. Right? And I'm going to give you an example of why, what this is about soon. But, so, the, so the first part I'm talking about is the B. The B has to be 0. So if I give you this, 
If I give you this y equals one third x plus one, is that as an example of direct variation? No. No, why? Because the b is not zero. The b is not zero. I wouldn't go through zero, zero. I would have to put my y-intercept at one, right? Because that's my y-intercept, one right there, right? So <coughs> that is not direct variation, no. What about this one? y is equal to um, 14 fifteenths x. Is that direct variation? Yeah. Yes. There is, n that's my m, y equals mx plus zero. So yes, that is an example of direct variation. What about this one? Um, is that an example of direct variation? Yes. Yes. How do you know? Because no, if you can't. move the 2x, it's no, negative 2x, and y equals negative 2 Right, so really, to find out, the easy way to do it is to put it in slope-intercept form. Solve for y. You want to say y equals, right? So what's in the way of it being saying y equals? That, right? So I'm going to subtract it. I'm going to subtract it. And I now have y is equal to negative 2x. Is that Now it's pretty easy. That it, Does everybody agree? That is direct variation, right? There's no plus 3 or plus 10 or minus 75. It's 0, plus 0. So that is direct variation. Y varies directly with x. Okay, so far? I know it's like, it's like you're probably saying right now, well, like, big deal, right? What's the big deal? That's what I say, big deal. There's not a lot to it. It's not that big, it's not that complicated. So if, let's try a couple others. Let's try, sorry. Let's say I give you this, um, negative 3x plus 10y equals um, 2. Is that an example of direct variation? No. But how do you know? You have to solve it first to know, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add 3x. I want it to be in y equals form, so I'm going to add 3x to both sides. I want my y's to, I'm sorry? You don't have to solve it to see. Why? Because you have a 2 on the other side, it's not 0. You're correct, that's correct. That is correct. You're right. <laughs> you although, wrote it. although, although there is, there, okay, well, we, we'll you keep did going. Write it we'll on. keep going. Oh, wait, what did I just do? Uh, Plus sign, sorry. And then I'm going to divide, divide by 10, divide by 10, divide by 10. So I have y is equal to 3 tenths x. That looks like direct variation, but unfortunately, I'm adding two tenths or one fifth, right? So because I added the one fifth, that means I'm not starting at zero zero. I'm starting at one fifth on the y-axis, right? Make sense? All right, let's try another one. What? What if I? What if I did? Um, uh, let me think. Um, what if I said, uh, you know, uh, 2x minus 3y um, plus 2 is equal to um, 5x uh, minus 2? Is that an example of direct variation? Yeah. Because Emma, you got this down, girl. You're amazing. So look, Emma's right. So look, if we subtract, oh wait, oh hang on, is she right? <gasps> we got to try it. If we subtract two, we subtract two. Uh oh, oh wait, that's going to be negative four. Had I had meant to do it, so that it was. So that's why I agree with you. But I didn't do it right. But anyways, so so because it's going to be negative four there after my b is going to be negative four, no matter or well, it's going to be negative four or something divided by probably by negative three. Right? Because um, then I have 2x minus 3y is equal to 5x minus 4. And then I've got to get rid of my 2x. So I'm going to subtract 2x, subtract 2x. God, this doesn't look very clean, does it? Neat. Okay. And then I've suddenly got negative 3y is equal to 3x minus 4 divided by negative 3. 
divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3. So y is equal to negative x plus 4 thirds, right? So you're right, it's not an example of direct variation because of that. But I had to m manipulate the equation to see it, right? You guys with me so far? Makes sense, right? Yeah. So now, so that's how you tell with a, an equation whether it's a direct variation. Now, one thing I want to point out, we're not, we haven't talked about this yet, and we're going to in just a second. It's this little letter here, A, or K, or in my case, M. Okay? They actually call that the constant of variation. And for some reason, I think the K probably makes sense, because it starts with the K, right? Constant of variation, but I still like the M better, because I already know that formula. So, um, we're going to talk about the constant of variation. It is a number. So when you have an equation, it's y equals not just kx or ax or mx, it's y equals 2x or y equals 4x or y equals a third x, you know, something like that. Oh, let me try one more. Is this an example of direct variation? I just want to see what you guys think. Is this an example of direct variation? y equals x over 4. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, can somebody explain why? Sina, you, you said why? You said yes? <coughs> was, that, was that you? Who said it? No. I'm sorry, who said yes? I don't care. <coughs> it doesn't matter. No. So, Isabel, tell me, why is that an example of direct variation? Because it is. Okay, so, but my question really is what is the K? No, wait, wait. What is wait. the A? What is the K? What is the M in like, this? Yeah, that's K is four. four because, but it's just well, not, let me it's think. That, you're saying that's the same as this? No, no. because it's divided no. division. Right? right, so what is K? Four. 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 Oh, yeah, I did this last night. What is it? One. And then it's like X plus. So you're saying Y equals one X? No. I don't know what I'm saying. Never mind. No, in front of the X is. So there's, it, there's an x in front of the, yeah. there's a 1 in front of the x, right? Yes. What's the fraction then in front of the x? 1 fourth. 1 fourth. Right? So it's like 1 fourth x. Yeah, so you would actually, you could write that as y is equal to 1 fourth x. Example of direct variation, yes or no? <coughs> yes, yeah. right? There's y equals mx plus 0, right? All right, so let's just see what they look like on graphs for a second. By the way, oh, shoot, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, well, I did it. Yeah. Y equals, I'm going to say mx because I like it. Y equals mx. M is the constant, oops, sorry, constant of variation. So let's think about what this really means. If I want to s write an equation that would tell me how much it would cost for a group of people to go s to a movie, and the movie tickets are $8, how, what kind of equation could I write that would show direct variation? I want to know my final cost, I'll call that y, equals, and I want to know, it costs $8 per ticket, $8 per ticket, all right, and I want an equation that will help me figure out how much I'm going to have to pay, no matter how many people come to the movie, yeah? Y equals 8 Y equals $8, right, times the number of people, makes sense, right? Yes. Y, the total cost is going to be $8, which is the cost of one ticket, times the number of people that buy that one ticket, right? Makes sense. That is an example of direct variation. <coughs> when I graph that, since I know it's direct variation, and it's already in y equals mx plus b, and what is my b? Zero. So I immediately plot my b at zero, zero. And you go a over And I go a up, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and over one. Boom. Right? And that's my next point. So there's my graph. Right? So I know that if 
I have um, um, yeah. So I know that if I if one person buys a ticket, it's going to cost me eight dollars. If I know that if two people buy a ticket, it's going to cost me sixteen dollars. And three dollars is I mean three people is going to cost me you know twenty four dollars, right? I can tell that from my graph. So it's almost easier to do it algebraically, right, than use the graph. But I can always use a graph to picture it, right? But so so tell me, is this an example of direct variation? Yes. Yes. If it crosses zero. If it goes through zero zero, it is, and it's a straight yeah. and it's a straight line. It's got to be a straight line, right? Can't be a can't be a wobbly line, right? Got to be straight line. All right, what about this? Is this an example of direct variation? Um, no. No. It almost goes to zero, but it doesn't. So now let's think about our example again. And let's think of an example how the same, same scenario, but it's no longer direct variation. Okay? So I want to know the cost. Do you have an idea, Lila? Mm -hmm. Okay, give me. So adding to the tickets, you have to... Um, no matter how many tickets there are, there will be three dollars of tax. Ah, so so for each, no matter no matter how many times you buy, I mean how many tickets you buy, there's a what do they call that when you do that? Like there's a. Oh, I just went la uh, this summer. I went to see um, this flamenco group um, that Rada dances in. Um, I don't know what they're I don't know what they're called, but but there's a when you buy. I ordered tickets on the phone. And they said it was a certain amount of amount of money, and then when I went to pick it up, they said, "Oh no, it's that amount of money plus this extra fee." And I can't remember what they called it. I'd never seen it before, but apparently it's really common. What is it? Do you know? I don't know, but it could also be like just to hold their tickets so that like. Yeah, yeah. There's a special. It was like unbelievable. It was like, it was like, holding fee. <coughs> it was. So, I mean, it wasn't. That wasn't what it was called. Do you know what I'm talking about? It was crazy, but they but it's typical. If you order on the phone, I'm told it's typical. I've never heard of this, but you order on the phone. You you know you're told it's going to be one price, and then when you get there, well, there's a holding fee. So they I had to pay five dollars extra just to get my tickets. You know, which was ridiculous. So it doesn't matter how many I buy. I could buy one ticket, but then I'd also have to pay five dollars in addition to that. I could buy ten tickets, but I'd still have to pay five dollars in addition for that one transaction. Does that make sense? So then it would be why the cost is $8 times the number of people that buy tickets plus that $5 fee. That's no longer direct variation when there's that extra fee. Does that make sense yes. a little bit? You're, you're going to see those kind of problems this year too where it's often set up in this y equals mx plus b thing. Whenever, this is a, this is a little hint, whenever you see per, Immediately, that's y equals mx, right? If it's if it's eight, if it's you know ten dollars per student, ah, that's you know that's ten s per student, right? Immediately, you know it's going to be it's going to vary depending on how many students, right? So const okay now, so everybody understands direct variation, I think, right? Am I right? Mm -hmm. Just to five, and it's not that hard, right? And the, unfortunately, that that the way they seem to describe it in the book makes it so complicated. Um, I had trouble understanding what they were saying. And um, I wanted to go over one other thing though. Um, actually, I'll keep that one more time. <laughs> y equals mx. Now sometimes you will see this. You will see something that says y varies. I, don't, I didn't give you any of these problems, but this is the last thing I'm going to cover for this lecture. Y varies directly with X. Okay? If I see that, I immediately do this. I write Y equals MX. That, if when it says Y varies directly with X, that's what it means. Y varies directly with X. Y equals MX. And then the second part of the question might be this. If um, if uh, let's see, I don't know. If 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 um, 
if 2 comma 8 is a solution, what is the constant? What is the uh, constant of variation? What is the constant of variation? You will see these kind of problems, I guarantee you. They love these problems on SAT tests and stuff. So what would I do? What, what, what are they asking me to find? Y, M, or X? Anybody? Anybody? M, M right? Because the M is my constant of variation. It's my slope. It's my constant of variation. It's a number. It's a set number that's always going to be multiplied times the X. And they're asking me to find it. Well, how am I going to find it? What did they give me? Points. Elila, what did they give me? Well, one of the points was always zero, zero, and then they gave me another point so if you graph it, then one, four, oh, one X would be four, and so that would be equal to one. Okay, so, so yeah, so they gave, so you could graph it, and you could find the constant of variation by looking at the slope, the because the slope is the constant of variation. Say it again, Isabel. Plug it in. But you could plug it in as well. You could, do, you could do what Lila suggested. And it was pretty brilliant of her to say, oh, well, actually, I know two points, not just one point. She realized, oh, well, 0, 0 is always one of the points, right? So suddenly, you can use your slope form. Remember slope formula? m is equal to um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Remember that? Yes. Right? So you could plug that in. So we could do that. We could say, OK, y2 is 8 minus y1 is 0 over 2 minus 0, which is 8 over 2, which is 4, right? <coughs> okay, so that says our slope would be 4. Let's try it, though, this other way. Let's say, okay, this is an x. They gave me an x of 2, and they gave me a y of 8, right? If I substitute 2 in for x and y in for 8, then I could solve for m. Do you agree? Because then there's only one equation, one unknown. Right? So let's try it. So now instead of y, I'm going to write 8. 8, and then the equal sign, and then I'm going to keep my m because I don't know what it is, and then my x is 2. So times 2. How would I solve that for m? I divide both sides by 2, right? m is equal to 4. Look at that. See what I mean? Does that make sense? Wait, can you do that with all like things where you're given points? If you're given points, you can do that, right? If you're given points and they say this, y varies directly with x. Oh yeah. Okay. Because you have to know your b, right? Yeah. And if you're if you're at, if you don't know your b and you've got you don't know your m, suddenly you have one equation with two unknowns, impossible. No, but like if they're like, isn't that the same as solving for m there? <coughs> The, uh, Up here? Yes. Yeah, you get the same thing. Yeah. So really, your constant of variation, ironically, is the same thing as your slope. It's the same thing. But it's just different terminology, and it's sort of a different scenario, but it's the same thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's not so hard, right? You guys would whip through that homework. If, if I had you do it now, it would take you five minutes, literally five minutes, yeah. to do that homework. So, all right, that's it for this section. Yes.